Your package holiday destination, remember, some holidaymakers are going on a much more ambitious trip. Three brave civilians crossed the final frontier today on the first ever Virgin Galactic tourist ship into space. A former Olympian and a mother-daughter pair travelled roughly 55 miles above the Earth on a flight that lasted just over an hour. The crew experienced zero gravity at the edge of space before returning safely back into the atmosphere. Although a success, the Virgin Galactic flight was not without risk. Space tourism companies currently run under an informed consent framework, meaning passengers must acknowledge the government has not certified commercial ships for safety. This was also the case with the doomed Ocean Gate submersible, which imploded on a deep sea mission in June. So why are people drawn to this kind of extreme tourism? Well, let's ask an extreme tourist, uh, astronaut and adventurer, a pair of women, uh, welcome. Um, you've had lots of experience with this sort of thing. I, I think you even signed up to get to, uh, to go on to uh, the Virgin uh, at the Galactic Spaceship 2. What, why, what draws you to this adventuring? Absolutely, I have an inner desire to live out my dreams to the full. <clears throat> We're granted a limited time on, on planet Earth and uh, better make the most of it. And some of us maybe have that extra gene that just are willing to take a little bit more risk, calculated risk, uh, and uh, to, to push the boundaries. It, it's exciting to be part of an adventure where you can generally push the boundaries a little bit further out, opening up access to space. Less than 600 people have ever been into space. That is changing uh. as of today. It'll, by, by, in the next couple of years, it'll be doubling that. So what's it like in space? Oh, it's fantastic. Um, it's the, the outer, uh, just, just the view, if you look at the, the view that they've had here today, looking out and, and looking at the beautiful planet, you really tend to appreciate how precious, how amazing this little planet is, and in particular, if you compare to all the other ones out there. But as an experience, as a, uh, as, as a private citizen going up there, it, it's, it's just amazing. So this is the first time that civilians uh, have been on board a so-called uh, space tourist, um, uh, uh, tourist spaceship. Can you see space tourism taking off, if I can put it that way? Uh, absolutely. First of all, it's not the first time. Uh, the very first time was actually in 2001. I was actually on the launch pad. Okay. When Dennis... Of course you were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally on the launch pad <laughs> 10 minutes before, and I said goodbye to Dennis Tito, who was, um, uh, who was the first one. He flew Soyuz uh, out of uh, Kazakhstan. Um, and uh, that, was, that was generally the very, very first time. And then since then, there have been other uh, lift with, uh, with Soyuz, but, but that's been reserved for the very few. Now it's opening up, and there is a genuine market for this. Um, uh, it, and amongst whom? Amongst people like myself, who, who, uh, who, are, who wants to push the boundaries, who want to go further out, who enjoys adventures, and, and for whom uh, a holiday in the Caribbean is just not enough. It's hugely expensive. You've, you've got to be worth a few bob to, to do this, though, haven't you? Um, yes, but then again, um, we all have our priorities. And I think if, if this is genuinely what you want, there are people who, um, you know, buy expensive cars or houses or whatever. Um, it's all a matter of choice at the end of the day. And, and I, there is one in our uh, astronaut corps who literally mortgaged the house up to the tilt just to be able to, to make it uh, into a space. Uh, so it's, it's not always uh, just for the rich. It's just a dedicated... OK, so you're hoping to get on one of these Virgin Galactic uh, flights, are you? Uh, I'm a founding astronaut with the programme, so I'll be flying very shortly. <laughs> Let's bring the panel in. <laughs> You've flown on the test flights, haven't you? I've, uh, I've done all the training. Uh, yeah. so I've, I've been... When did you see... When did you go into space? Uh, I'm, I'm going to space... Uh, this was uh, rocket number, number yeah. two. Yeah. I'm on rocket number ten. Really? What, what, when's the takeoff? Uh, hopefully spring next year. And you're not frightened at all, are you? No, I'm excited, terribly excited. I know, that, I know the people who have, who have been doing it. I'm also aware that it is informed consent, that, so it's, it's not without risk. But it is certified and it is, uh, it is done by very, very intelligent people, both the engineering part, the training, the, and it's safety, safety, safety above all. But nothing is 100% safe. And it seems to me that the action heroes of today, it, it's all about managing the tech. When your Hillary's climbing Everest, you know that was a bit about tech, but mainly it was about his level of fitness and and the and the people who were who were with him. And I just, I, I wonder how that feels because it is about trust, effectively, isn't it? It is about trust, and uh, and it's still also about the training. To be honest, I mean, you do get spun through a centrifuge training, outflown uh, make fighter jets as part of it to be 
sort of bounced around. So you're actually being trained and you feel how it is to go into space. But yet an 82-year-old man went up in space today. Yes, so 80 how, years old, yeah. How, how... A former Olympian. Why do they keep it secret? Well, um, he was an Olympian. Yeah, well, they he... said he's an Olympian, but they won't tell us who it was. Uh, I no, think we do have his name now. It's, it's John Goodman. Yeah, yeah he, was, he was doing uh, canoeing uh, oh. in the 1972 uh, uh, Olympics. He's come out now, now that he's been up to space <laughs> and back, yeah. It was Absolutely. Do you fancy this, Tessa? I I've got to say no. I I'm a bit of a control freak and, and I wouldn't like, even driving in a car, I sometimes have a bit of an out-of-body, wow, you know, I'm totally depending on everyone else going in the right lane at the right moment. And you staying in your body would help. Everything Indeed and everyone would. on the road. So I think just taking it to, to the next level. And also, OK, you're part of the team, but £350,000 for a blink and you miss it moment. What happens if I had a headache? Well, I mean, that's a lot of money. But better not on that day. is a big <laughs> fan of this. They're inside pages. Let's have a quick look at that. Anything is possible. That's, that's quite a picture. Look, he's, he's quite a dude, exactly isn't he, that exactly guy? Yeah. yeah, he's no, looking absolutely. good. He's, he's looking like he's lost years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amazing. Well, well, did, uh, didn't William Shatner go up? He did. Uh, yeah, yeah so he did. He's he the up. oldest man so ever started. to be in space. Yep. But, uh, I mean, I'm surprised. I mean, I didn't think... I never thought of Dr Dunlop as a control freak. I thought you'd be uh, right up going into space. But I would, I would do it in an absolute heartbeat. No, no, no question. No. Absolutely. Life is about experiences, Phil. You know, you can't take it with you, can you? Absolutely. You've got to have it. And when you're sitting dribbling in the nursing home... Yes. You want to remember the experiences, uh, okay, the can, unique experiences that you can absolutely. dine out on. Can, can I just kill the mood and ask what the carbon <laughs> footprint is for a space shuttle? Oh. Well, <laughs> oh, no, it's, be asked. it's a fair question. It's a fair question, and uh, let's be honest, it, it's not the most CO2-friendly experience. Uh, and there's many ways you can look at it. And if you're trying to be positive, you can say, well, the carbon footprint is actually less per passenger uh, compared to a flight from New York to London. And if you but being let's be honest, it is not a CO2-friendly experience. But the amount of, of, of uh, trips going up and stuff is so little that it doesn't matter. Jeez. And we got to live for a little now. bit. Listen, Pear, Pear Wimmer, uh, astronaut and adventurer, thank you so much for, for joining us here on First Edition. Our panel will stay with us. Um, they'll stay with us uh, for an in-depth look at tomorrow's 